I'd like to uh, welcome Dr. Bob Norris, who will start the program this evening. Well, good evening. Thank you, Shelley. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for giving up your beautiful Thursday evening to come and hear about a topic that uh, is near and dear to my heart, obviously, and uh, I'm sure is, is uh, a, a topic of, of significant interest to many of you in the audience, or you wouldn't be here tonight. Um, we just, what I want to do, we were going to start off by having Paul Auerbach talk a little bit about the, sort of the national situation with emergency medicine in the United States, and then I was going to follow Paul and talk about what's going on specifically at Stanford with emergency medicine, both currently, what, what we're doing, what some of our challenges and obstacles are, some of our opportunities, uh, and then sort of what the future holds for us over the next several years. Uh, we're going to reverse that order, obviously, and congratulations to Paul's son for their, their victory. Uh, they won by one, by one run, I understand. Um, so we'll talk first about what's going on at Stanford. And I think since Paul isn't going to be able to set the stage for emergency medicine nationally, I thought I should probably at least set the stage for why people would choose to go into this as a specialty, okay? Um, now, there's no doubt that television really impacts a lot of people and a lot of decisions that young people make towards their careers, I think. Um, now, I'm going to age myself here because as I was growing up, this was the show that I was watching. <laughs> and uh, I have a, a sort of an embarrassing uh, thing that I have to, have to tell you here tonight, and that is, as a, as a kid, I wanted to be Johnny Gage, okay? <clears throat> Firefighter rushing in, pulling people out of burning buildings, that kind of thing. But as I got older and I advanced through my schooling a little bit more, it really it didn't take me long to realize that the person that really got to make the tough decisions, the hard decisions, the truly life-saving de decisions was Dr. Kelly Brackett, the emergency physician in the emergency room at Rampart Hospital, of course, right? <laughs> so that's when I knew I wanted to go into emergency medicine. Of course, it didn't hurt that he uh, actually got to work with Dixie McCall, but uh, <clears throat> that had nothing to do with it. So Stanford Emergency Medicine. I always like to start these types of talks off with a show of hands of people in the audience who have either been in the emergency department as a patient or with family or with friends or have a close relative or friend that was in the Stanford emergency department. How many people in here? Okay, now we see why everybody's here, everybody's interested <laughs> in this topic. So, and I, and I will say, one of my favorite sayings about emergency medicine is everybody that goes to the emergency room is having a bad day, all right? And that, I mean, that's intuitively obvious. So whenever I'm at a social gathering and somebody walks up to me and says, you know, my, my friend was in your emergency department last week. The hairs go up on the back of my neck just a little bit because it's either going to be a very good story or there's going to be something they want to talk about that didn't go quite the way they wanted it to. And we're going to talk a little bit tonight about why that is. So Stanford Emergency Medicine. Okay, this is the sign that we put out in front of the emergency room. It's required by the state, all emergency departments in the state have this sign that says basic emergency medical services physician on duty. And I'm here to tell you tonight that there's nothing basic about emergency medicine at Stanford. Okay, some of the things that set us apart from the other emergency departments in the area, in the region, were a level one trauma center, which is the highest designation that any medical center can have from the American College of Surgeons. It means we have all the specialists and all the subspecialists we need to take care of all forms of trauma immediately available to us. We're a quaternary referral center, which means that we take the most difficult cases, the challenging cases that sometimes get turned down by other facilities, end up coming to Stanford to be taken care of. We're a pediatric critical care center, meaning we have all the equipment, all the appropriate age and size uh, equipment that we need for, uh, to handle children of all ages. And we have a life flight helicopter program, uh, which is very active and brings in uh, critically ill and, and injured patients uh, quite often, as we'll talk about. A few statistics just to kind of show where we are currently at Stanford. Uh, last fiscal year, we saw just over 44,000 patients, which is an increase of almost 4% from the fiscal year before. And currently, halfway through the fiscal year, we're almost 5% ahead of where we were last year. 
And our admission rate, this is absolutely a critical statistic to see, and that is our admission rate's running at 34 percent, which means one out of every three people that walk through our doors or, or rolled through our doors on a gurney end up being admitted to the hospital. That's compared to a national average of 12 to 13 percent. Okay? What that tells you is the people that are coming to the emergency department are very, very sick or very, very seriously injured and require admission very often. And this slide sort of tells it all. This is our, our, our um, ED visit rate over the last number of fiscal years. And you can just look at the slope of the line and tell why things feel the way they do oftentimes in the Stanford Emergency Department. It's a frenetic environment. We do take care of all ages, from the cradle to the grave. About a quarter of our patients are in the pediatric age group under the age of, of 18. This is our catchment area. This is where we get most of our patients from. Um, as you can see, we serve the entire peninsula pretty much and well into the South Bay and even over into the East Bay. And this obviously doesn't include the people that come in by fixed wing aircraft being referred uh, to our quaternary center for subspecialty care. And one thing that I think is very important to realize is that we are the only clinical service that's open 24-7, 365 days a year or with the leap year, 366. Uh, and we, sur we support every clinical program in the emergency, I mean, in the hospital. After hours, on weekends, on the holidays, if one of their patients gets sick or has a problem, they end up in the Stanford Emergency Department most commonly, whether it's the stroke service, our oncology service, our interventional cardiologists, our transplant service, et cetera, et cetera. About 80% of our patients walk through the doors. That means about one-fifth actually come in by ambulance. And if you want to plan your ER visit, this is a statistic that's helpful to you. <laughs> Arrivals by time of day. And you can see in the early, if you want to come in 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, pretty good time. And then it gradually ramps up throughout the day. And I didn't put this slide in here, but if I showed you what our staffing pattern is for the ED, it matches this exactly. And obviously we, we ramp up our staff to handle our volume on a predicted basis. But you can't predict with certainty what's going to happen on any particular day in an emergency department like Stanford's. Trauma alerts. These are patients that EMS brings to us and they have designated in the field that this is a particularly seriously injured patient. We see about between five and six of these a day. These are seriously or critically ill patients. You can see we had over 2,000 in the last 12 months. And these are the trauma centers in, on the peninsula and in the, in the South Bay area. Stanford handles all the trauma in the southern half of San Mateo County. San Mateo County does not have a trauma center of its own. We handle all the trauma in the northern half of Santa Clara County. So between San Francisco and San Jose, we're it in terms of trauma care. Life flight. In the last fiscal year, they had a, an average of about two flights per day. And very interestingly is they see a third of their flights are going to be scene calls. And these are often calls up on skyline, traffic accidents, things like that, where it's difficult to get an ambulance to make that route all the way up and down that hill if you've got somebody who's critically ill or injured or whatever. And then about two-thirds are inner facility. And these are some of our specialty teams that we send out. We have high-risk obstetrical teams that go out and get women who are having difficulty with deliveries. Neonatal ICU and pediatric ICU patients, we have specialty teams that will go out on the helicopter and pick up these patients as well. Now, the current physical plant of the Stanford Emergency Room, we have 30 beds, and that's about just over 11,000 square feet. It was built 32 years ago, and it was built to handle a volume of patients less than half of what we see today, and with much less technology than what we're using today. The only significant, the only real clinical change in terms of the, the physical plant since I've been at Stanford, which is almost 17 years now, was the opening of our pediatric area uh, back in, in uh, 2005, December 1, 2005, which really set sort of a new paradigm. If you've seen our pediatric area, this is just some shots taken from it. It's a beautiful facility, a lot of nice, nice equipment, very nice rooms, all private rooms. This is the waiting area, which is too small, but it's all that we really had room to put in here. This is Dr. Bernie Dannenberg, who's our director of pediatric emergency medicine. And this really sort of set the new, new standard for what we want the emergency department to look like. This is just a typical treatment room, state-of-the-art equipment, monitoring. Um, Apple computers actually donated 
uh, max to, for each of these rooms so that patients can come in, young children can be, have something of a diversion, playing video games, parents can check their email or whatever, uh, they can be looking up what their diagnosis is so they can have good questions for the doctors when we walk in the room. Um, and that's been great.